I just wish I could see all of you. It's great to have you though. And thanks for checking in. Let me know you're here. Say so in the comments because then we'll know. Hi everyone. Yeah, it's time for a good time with Auntie Bookworm. Yeah, welcome coming to see us on a Saturday night. And um, can I just show you a few things we've been up to? Well, you know, we've we planted some seeds a while back. Yes, we've been measuring. We have been measuring and we found that our big sunflowers are already up to nine centimeters tall. There you go. Those are our biggest ones right there. Do you want to see how the little ones did though? Now they are, they're not as tall because they're called dwarf sunflowers. They're not meant to be as tall. But do you see all that? Seeds sprouting in every part of the carton. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, it's definitely planting time. You know, a lot of moms appreciate some plants. And you know, next week we have a special day for moms here. So maybe think of planting some seeds for your mom. We even planted some cucumber seeds a few days ago. Hadn't told you about that yet, but we have them here. And they've already, they're just little wee baby sprouts. No, not those, but these ones. Let's see, where are we? Right there, little tiny baby ones. They really need special care when they're little. Keep them nice and moist. So there you go. Our, our seeds are sprouting. And maybe you'll have a chance to have uh, some fresh vegetables grown at your house if you get a chance to sprout some seeds. Do you think I've kept the carrot tops alive? Let's see. I almost lost one. They dried out yesterday, but <gasps> came back. And that's just from my carrots. The top of my carrots. So cool. So, again, thanks for being here, everybody. Oh, look, Brad and Josh are here. Hello, neighbors. Hi, Mason. Good to see you. And there's Mrs. C. Thanks for checking in, guys. Um, uh, today, we wanted to launch something that happens for the month of May. That is right. May is Asian Heritage Month. For sure. So we're going to read a story tonight. This part of our Blue Spruce Book Club. And it's a story about someone who came from Asia to Canada. And it's called Mustafa. But before we get into our story, let's sing a song. Are you ready? Now this one's got actions, so Bumble, you'll have to sit and watch. I hope some of you feel like doing some actions tonight out there. Are you ready? We've got actions like this, and this, and this. It's called The Lady and the Crocodile. Oh, she sailed away on a bright and sunny day on the back of a crocodile. You see, said she, he's as tame as tame can be. I'll ride him down the Nile. The croc winked his eye as she waved them all goodbye, wearing a happy smile. At the end of the ride, the lady was inside, and the smile was on the crocodile. There you go. Would you ride on the back of a crocodile? I hope not. Don't even take a chance. It's not going to be worth it. The lady thought she could get away with it, but no. Riding crocodiles is very silly. So, remember a few weeks ago we read um, The Great Kapok Tree, and it nicely had a map in the front of the book. So I thought I'd just show you on the map, in case you couldn't remember where Asia is in the world. Brad, can you see it? I know you're there. Hmm. Oh, some other friends are there. There's Mrs. Harris. And, oh, here's Asia. We're over here in North America. There's Canada. And Asia's here. And some of our friends that watch Angie Bookworm have family in Asia. Some of them were even born there. So, tonight, we are doing our shout-out. Where's our shout-out sign? Oh. We did a lot of things here today. Well, shout out to our Asian 
Heritage Month friends. So I was thinking of my friend Kartha Kayan, and I was thinking of uh, my friends Aliza, Isa, and Myra. And I was also thinking of my friends Esam and Ihab. So um, I just wanted to let everybody know that we're going to do a few different stories in the month of May that have to do with Asian heritage. So excellent. Our first one is this nice Canadian written story about a little boy who moves to Canada. Can you imagine moving to a country where maybe you don't know very many people or maybe you know no one at all except well, maybe your family is with you? Um, maybe you can't even speak the language they speak there. Maybe it looks really different or the weather is really different. Maybe they have different celebrations than you're used to and everything is so new. It's exciting, a little bit scary. Yeah, so this little fella's name is Mustafa. And let's see what Marie Louise Gay wrote about Mustafa. She takes her time with beautiful detailed illustrations. So really notice what's happening there with those gray leaves blowing off in the direction. Mustafa, and there's a little tiny picture. What's that family doing? Carrying, everyone's carrying big parcels. Oh, and the moon is out. And are those stars? This one's dedicated for Sheila Berry. I forgot to mention our publisher. Who do you think it is tonight? Feeling it's Groundwood. Yes, it's Groundwood Books. See that illustration? It's so pretty with all the colors, isn't it? And there's a there's a little ship going on, a very wavy ocean. And before I read, let's just notice the sky. What's that? Hmm. The moon is full and then it's gone and then it's full again. You know how long that takes? About a month, right? Yeah, it takes about a month. Mustafa and his family traveled a very, very long way to get to their new country. Some nights, Mufasa, Mustafa's dreams about the country he used to live in, dreams full of smoke and fire and loud noises. He wakes up. Where am I? He asks. You are here, says his mama. She hugs him tightly. They go out to look at the moon and the stars. There they are. Is that the same moon as in our old country, says Mustafa? Yes, answers his mama, the very same moon. Only then can Mustafa go back to bed. Mustafa looks down at the park. It's so green. In his country, the trees were gray with dust and dry as sticks. He sees birds hiding in the trees, red birds, blue birds, yellow birds. Have you been seeing some of those? lots of them around lately. He sees two small animals jumping from branch to branch. Are they in the picture? I don't know where. Their bushy tails wave and curl in the air. And they chatter like monkeys. Do you want to play in the park? asks his mother. Yes, says Mustafa, and he runs downstairs. Oh, there they are. They're way in this corner, little squirrels. I bet you've been seeing some squirrels around our neighborhood here anyway, in this part of the world. Mustafa walks under the trees. The air smells green and cool. He sees flowers shaped like his grandmother's pink teacups. He sees flowers that look like dragon tongues. He finds two treasures, a white snail shell and a yellow heart-shaped leaf. Mustafa sees a parade of ants carrying tiny blades of grass like flags. They look like the ants in his old country. So do the soft fuzzy caterpillars. So do the buzzing bees. 
Bzzz. So some things are the same. Mustafa hears a noise. He hides behind a tree. A girl walks in the park. She holds a ribbon tied to a cat. In Mustafa's country, cats were skinny and wild. They lived in the streets. They didn't wear ribbons. The girl sees him. She says something. Mustafa doesn't understand her words. He pretends to tie his shoe, and then he runs back to his apartment. Back already, asks his mother, what did you see in the park? Mustafa tells her about the flowers that look like grandma's pink teacups and the parade of ants waving their flags. He shows her his white snail shell and his yellow heart-shaped leaf. Lovely, said his mother. But he doesn't tell her about the girl with a cat. <laughs> Why wouldn't he tell her? Can you think? The next day, Mustafa sees the shiny red bugs with black spots. Oh, are you used to seeing these little guys around? Maybe I haven't seen them yet this year, but they'll be out soon. They look like jewels. He finds more treasures, an acorn, a speckled stone, and a perfect drawing stick. Mustafa draws an airplane in the sand. He draws a house he used to live in. He draws clouds of smoke and fire. He draws broken trees. Oh, oh dear. Suddenly, the girl with the cat is there. Oh, she's back. She points to the drawings and says something. Her words float in the air and disappear. Mustafa drops his stick and runs away, and the girl draws flowers, butterflies, and stars. She draws her cat. The clouds of smoke and fire disappear. So do the broken trees. So does Mustafa. <laughs> Mustafa goes to the park every day. The trees have turned bright orange and red. Is this magic, he wonders. He sees an old lady feeding breadcrumbs to a whirlwind of pigeons. In Mustafa's country, there was not enough food to share with the birds. The old lady speaks to them. She must be a magician. Mustafa wishes he could speak bird language. Want to try some bird language with me? <laughs> Mustafa sees a small vampire chasing a fairy. What? There are vampires around here? Ah. Look for the clues. Those are children dressed up, right? Oh, the leaves were falling off the trees. The children's are in costumes. You know what that means. <gasps> There's a jack-o'-lantern. Mufasa sees a small vampire chasing a fairy, a fox, and a rabbit. They are screaming and laughing. Mustafa waves to them. They don't see him. They disappear into the trees. See, he's way back on the bench there. All alone still. Mustafa hears music. It winds its way through the trees like a river. A man is playing a red accordion. Mustafa knows that too, and his uncle Amir played it all the time. Everyone smiles and waves and claps their hands. A dog barks. Birds sing. Mustafa whistles. <whistles> along with the music. But nobody notices him. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Hmm. This guy seems pretty lonely, doesn't he? Mama asks Muf Mustafa, am I invisible? If you were invisible, I couldn't hug you. Could I? Answers his mom. The next day, Mustafa sees the girl with the cat. Before she can see him, he scrambles up to the top of a huge tree. Now he really is invisible. 
But the girl with the cat finds him. She makes a sign with her hand. It means, come here. He follows the girl to a pond filled with dark water. The girl points. Three fat orange fish are swimming in circles. The girl takes some yellow grains out of her pocket and throws them in the water. What do you think the fish are going to do? The fish rush to the surface to eat and they make funny fish faces. Mustafa laughs. So does the girl. Almost like a kissy face, isn't it? A fish face. <laughs> the girl leads Mustafa to another part of the park where there are swings. She ties her cat to a tree. She sits on a swing. The girl swings back and forth, higher and higher. She looks down at Mustafa. He sits on the swing. He swings slowly back and forth, then higher and higher. Together, they almost reach the treetops. Together, they almost touch the clouds. Yay, he's finally smiling. The girl points to herself and says something. It sounds like Maria. It also sounds like music, happy music. Then she points to Mustafa. He understands. Mustafa, he says. Maria smiles. Mustafa doesn't feel invisible anymore. See them saying their names to each other? nice isn't it and there's the birds and that's our little story tonight Mustafa now for some of my friends that was the 10th and final um, Blue Spruce Book Club book but because we read them so long ago we're going to start over again and go through them uh, in May so that's coming up in a couple of weeks and we're actually going to try and host a voting time for you to pick your favorite of the 10 nominated books those are canadian books the blue spruce book club and we also have something coming up this week we have mother's day coming a week from tomorrow so starting tomorrow we are going to read a few books with moms in them so please come back all through the week and hear some fun requests that kids have asked for and also um to hear some stories for our moms Okay, it's great to see everybody. It's okay you came in late, Kennedy. Don't worry about it. It's on Facebook. You can watch it after, or I'll put it on the YouTube channel, and you can always watch it there, too. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Brush your teeth. Bye now. Bye. Bye, friends.